Podcast, the Cured Podcast, is here to explain our perspective of the human experience. We hope it leads to questions, learning, wisdom, and knowledge. Welcome to Chaos to Cured Podcast uh, with your hosts, uh, Jeffrey Freed and Kirkpatrick Miller. Uh, we want to thank you all for being here um, today. You know, we want to talk about relationships. We dived into it in the first season and we want to kind of talk about, um, you know, one, you know, a lot of people out there talk about you know, relationships and claiming to be an expert. Neither one of us are claiming to be an expert. We have had multiple failures. And, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've learned a lot and I'm appreciative of every single relationship I've ever had, positive and negative. So um, what we want to delve into is when you have uh, a relationship with uh, someone else that is not neurotypical um, in terms of how they think, how they process the world, whether they're on the spectrum, uh, bipolar, PTSD, anxiety, OCD, generalized uh, anxiety. I think I brought that up twice. Apparently I'm affected by that extra uh, this week. Um, Again, the list goes on. I'm bringing some of these up because they're all things I deal with. Um, And, you know, Jeffrey is, you know, a world renowned expert in uh, both, you know, uh, ADHD and, you know, is, you know, current real specialty right now is all individuals on the spectrum of any age. So we want to talk about relationships regarding those individuals and, you know, some of the difficulties that we have both seen and experienced from one side and then You know, we'll talk about some of the perspectives that we've heard from all the individuals we work with, um, again, from both perspectives. So we're going to try to cover this. Um, It's a poignant topic, and I think it's really vital for people to kind of grasp. So, um, you know, Jeffrey, I don't know if there's any good particular way to jump into this. Um, So I hate to throw you in the fire, but... uh, (laughs) Go for it. Let's let's have you start this off. Um, just jump into it where you see again the world is changing around us, how you kind of see that happening, and you know, um just jump into the topics so of relationships and non-neurotypical sure. thinkers and minds. All right. So my my take on on all that is people who are non-neurotypical learners, processors have almost all have exaggerated senses. I've said that ad nauseum, um, but I can't say it too much. So I'm going to say it again. Um, The non-neurotypical, generally visual learner has a whole range of sensitivities. It's kind of an intelligence, the way they pick up information about the world. And it's a very valid way to gather information to have exaggerated intense senses and you pick up more. However, it's not all good. Um, And part of the not good is we are very, very sensitive and get offended easily. Um, A lot of us, if not all of us, tend to be anxious. Um, Rejection is god awful for anybody. But if you're hypersensitive to stuff, it can be so devastating that you don't even want to go on. Um, So a lot of people who are not neurotypical, what happens is they don't, they want, desperately want a relationship, but they have, they're so sensitive that if, if things don't go perfectly well at the beginning, they get offended, they hold grudges, and they begin to develop a philosophy. This is very common of, I'll kick someone out of my life before they kick me out of theirs. So it's like a preemptive strike. And those of us, um, who are mildly on the spectrum, we're we're tough with this. Um, We tend to be loyal. We tend to have very intense emotions and we tend to get offended easily. Not a great recipe for a successful relationship, man, woman, man, man, whatever. Um, The sensitivity is a killer. 
And the way I, the way I deal with it at this point is I'm just real honest when you know I get into a relationship, and it doesn't work most of the time. Most people, if you start being real honest and you say stuff like you know, um, it's really hard for me to have a relationship because I feel so much. Um, it's probably too much information early on in the relationship. But after a time or two of going on dates or hang, hanging out with someone, it's kind of important to have that conversation. If they reject you, want no part of you, well, you're far better off knowing now than to get into it and to for it to backfire later, which is even more devastating. So just like be honest, because that's really pretty much your only choice. If you're not honest, it's going to come out anyway. Um, you're going to sabotage the relationship or set it up so that they um, are the probability of them rejecting you is higher. It's real stress inducing for most human beings to have a relationship. But for people on the spectrum, it's really powerful. And rejection is like the worst case scenario. You add on top of that um, the fact that relationships nowadays are so much different and no. it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting kirk to think about how dating is you date, you date off of apps um you communicate via text pretty safe for someone who's afraid of relationships because you can have a fantasy relationship without ever meeting anybody and that works for a lot of people um works really really well you can you can say that you have friends, that you have close friends, but you don't. You just have people that are telling you what you want to hear and people that you are telling what, what you want them to hear. And that's not a relationship. So the, the art form of developing a relationship is way different and probably not, not very healthy. You know, there's a few things that you just said that – and totally spun this in a different direction, you know, for me in, in some ways. Um, and it still pertains to relationships. So I, I just want to jump on it while before I lose the thought. I don't think you can actually have a good relationship with any person, anything, any job, anything in your life until you have a good relationship with yourself. And the weirdest thing about that is it took me like you know 40 plus years i mean i started figuring some of it out when i started becoming stable stability consistency those things help us recognize some things that are important and uh pattern-based thinkers like myself and uh, you know non-neurotypical um we're talking about you know individuals again some of the things that uh, and by the way, anybody who's listening to this, there's a fascinating thing. I just looked up critical, or I, I think I just looked up my own book, Chaos to Cured. And, and I don't remember what, there, there was a, a video of a psychologist and he was talking about mania and um, he brought up Elon Musk. And this was from 2000, I want to say 2009. Or so, because uh, that's been, it, it, again, I want to throw that out there. It might be out by a couple of years, but he was mentioning all these things like oh, building EVs and all this other stuff. Well, you know what? He actually got it done. Um, one of the problems that we see, and I personally experienced, and the reason I brought that particular individual up, um, it's a politi politically charged individual. I don't want to get into that i want to focus on what he has because he said he's on the spectrum um he has revolutionized how cars are manufactured and i see him a lot like temple grandin and what she revolutionized which was um i i don't know the specifics but i know at the university of uh colorado was it csu colorado state yes. university and was it um I know it had to do with livestock. She redesigned yeah. and reimagined so much. Yeah, she. what she did is she developed a system to kill animals for food that was humane, 
it caused it caused the animals basically very little pain, and that, that revolutionized everything. And um, it was also very efficient, right? Very efficient. Very. It w- it was as harmless as you can be to the cows, and um, you know, so a slaughterhouse was not a, a house of horror. I mean, you're still killing animals, which is pretty awful, but. I guess necessary. I'm not going to get into that, but she basically created, she got out of her own head and she viewed it from the animal's perspective. And if she were to be slaughtered for food, how she would prefer um, for that to happen. And, you know, that she, she revolutionized the way, the way people um, create food from animals and the animals suffer minimally if, if at all. And they're treated well, they're fed well, they're allowed to graze. Um, she's amazing. And she did it all in her head. Before. I mean, she had the whole thing, like Elon Musk, he does it all in his head. And that's a real typical thing for the non-neurotypicals. Very, very, very good imaginations. The ability to hold mental images for a protracted period of time. That's a plus. And so, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I, I didn't even want to interrupt you. So as everyone listens to this, this is impulsivity, um, the fear of losing a thought. And the thing is, is I can still hold on to it. Um, and I didn't want to, I, I was scared. We'll get it. We'll get into a fear. We're going to do a thing on fear later on. Um, but to stay on topic. So for me, when you look at, what is that person willing to do with their life? A lot of, he has mentioned multiple times that he slept on the factory floor. Um, he, what I'm trying to get at is when you're in a relationship with someone like that, mm-hmm. oftentimes um, their, their need for success, their, they get lost in that, that world and as human beings a lot of the people that were with me and so i'm speaking from individual experience thought i was lost in my like they were less important than what i was doing Mm -hmm. or because i didn't and this is very common with i i have wonderful people that i care about very much and they haven't heard from me in years and it has nothing to do with my thought process. I think about them like daily. And I have this huge long list of amazing people that I would love to talk to like every day. I'd love to just live in a commune with all these spectacular people. So why don't I reach out to them? They see a lot of individuals and I would say most, and I know you, you, know, you will understand as well. They see that as a personal attack. I'm not, yes, I'm not trying to not reach out. I don't even think of reaching out because I'm in my own head, my own world, which is not necessarily, and again, it's not out of not liking the world that's out there. It's because the world out there is so much and so overwhelming for me that I almost need to create a separate reality. And in that case, that's why I, why I love writing. I can write when I'm writing a book. I literally don't even know what's happening. It's like watching a movie for me. When I write, it doesn't feel like writing. It's like something is happening. I don't know what the character is going to do. And I think part of that is because it's an escape. And the thing is, is that there's so many people that are trying to escape. Um, and, and the reason this hits relationships is because so many of us um, don't know how to communicate how we feel. So I, I want to give a really good example. It has nothing to do with a romantic relationship. It was my, my dad and I, and it was like literally like last week. He was driving home and he wanted to listen to the sports game and on the car. And 
I'm super sensitive to it. Doesn't it just always bothered me? And I never knew why, or whatever else. But I kind of I was like, listen, I just need you to hear me. So there's a difference between listening and hearing. And I I just told him I was like, listen, I'm super sensitive. This sound just drives me crazy. Like I I can't picture it. They're explaining football, but it's like you know interrupted with like tangents so i just i can't it's too much the the noise is too much the, the speakers aren't very good they're not they're built for bass you know they're not built for a human voice so everything gets to me and then you know what was amazing about just being able to voice exactly what i felt was release all of a sudden i'm like wow i like I can handle it more because as you said before in a previous podcast, like there's steam. It's like building up. So like everybody that's listening to this right now, I mean, Jeffrey is one of the reasons why I'm able to like see some of these epiphanies and he's one of the first that was out there. So definitely look at his book again and buy it, please. Right brain children in a left brain world. Um, and again, you know, some of this, the podcasts that we've done, he's mentioned this so many times. Um, and again, when I think in relationships, there's so many times where we get into the point where we are, one person is so resentful of not being heard. It's not that the other person isn't trying They're not doing the right things because the other person either hasn't been heard or the other person hasn't communicated clearly or they're afraid to communicate. And, you know, for everybody listening to it, like, I mean, you know, lead with actions. If you're a guy, don't, don't speak promises. Do, do what you need to do. Lead with actions. Words mean nothing. Um, And then if you're a female, um, in my experiences, would you please tell men what to do? Because we don't have a freaking clue. So please tell us and we're fine. We're willing to act. I mean, do you think that's, I I don't mean to make light of the relationship dynamic, but that's how I feel. I feel so lost a lot of times. And if people would just tell me what the heck to do, I'm fine following a social protocol if I understand it. You know, so communication. So I'll jump back to you with all of that. I don't think there's any social protocol anymore. Um, It's, I mean, there is, but it's way different. It's changing so quickly. I I was struck with, in terms of relationship stuff, the, the people that I know who are on the spectrum were just non neurotypical learners, uh, visual thinkers. They have, they, they, when they get in a relationship, it's, if it's working, it's so strong, it's so intense. Their partner, a lot of times, will feel smothered. Um, it's such a relief for these visual folks who don't think in words, who think in images and, are, and in strong emotions to find someone that they can communicate with and that they focus, all their energy is focused on that relationship doesn't end because the person being relied on feels smothered or it's happening too soon or that they think that the person that is coming on to them is too intense. I hear that all the time. So I guess one of the things that pops into your head is when you get into a relationship um, or one is fomenting, fomenting, what you want to do is you want to deflect the attention off yourself Everyone loves to talk about, you know, their self. So talk, ask your date, friend, whatever, to talk about their feelings and stuff and, and be a sincere listener and do not, you're going to have to fight this. Um, like, don't tell that person that you love them and the, by the second or third date, even though you might, just drives people away. And I see this, I mean, I've done this and I've seen it so many times. And then the, the person that's the non-neurotypical intense processor, they, you know, once they get rejected three or four times, they just say, 
everybody sucks, relationships suck, I'm not even going to bother anymore. And they crawl back in, into their cocoon. And uh, we got a lot more people that are on the spectrum now than we used to. Um, not just recognize, they're there. They're, they're definitely being created by our culture. And this, this is so pandemic, endemic, something demic, where <laughs> people are terrible with relationships. They're either too intense or they're, or they're um, kicking people out of their lives the minute they feel the slightest problem. It's a preemptive strike. And relationships are mostly um, on a phone or on a computer. And that's really bad because the, the more that continues, the less real intimate relationships as we define them um, will occur. So there's, oh. a, right, there's a crisis here. Oh, there's, that was a good point right there. You know, there's so many crises in our lives nowadays, but I think one of the biggest is in interpersonal relationships, socialization. Most of them are toxic. Not all. There's plenty of, of people who have really healthy relationships, but not, it's not as common as it used to be. People are so sensitive. They're so self-engrossed. They're so emotional. And it doesn't lead to, to a quiet, good, long-term, stable relationship, Kirk. You know, what was the concept you brought up before? Um, I wrote it down because I thought it was really important. You brought it up, and when uh, society gets overstimulated, like there's too much um, overload in terms of information, everything else, uh, connection, too many people. What is that word called? Um, you know what I'm talking about? Cacophony? No, it's um, the, it's oh, like the downfall of society, right? Yeah, and it's comes uh, from... called anime. A n o m i e, anime. Anime. I, I, it, and again, that's not anime, uh, no. which is like you know graphic novels. And uh, again, I love comic books and stuff like that. I love that kind of art form. So that's why I got confused. So would you spell it one more time? A n o m i e. Okay. So, and explain the concept because this goes right back to, and this will lead. I'll, it'll lead me into the relationship part. Okay. Um, anime is when you don't feel connected to a culture or a small group. You just a feeling of not belonging to anything or anybody. And it occurs at a certain point in a culture where people become um, numbers or not very important to each other. And you just lose a feeling that we're all in this together and we see other people as uh, competitor, competitors for space and for air and for food. And they're a pain in the ass because they're clogging up the roads when you're trying to get to ski. So you develop a feeling of not belonging to anything and the people don't like people. Okay. So the, one of the, the things that I've been just overwhelmed with is there are so many new apps and uh, parents listening to this, there's a whole bunch of them. There's Ogle. I'm not sure, even sure how to spell it. There's all these apps that sidestep the App Star app store at uh, Apple, um, and it's meant to communicate. So you can send messages to other people, um, and that particular one is like it just sets you up with somebody random. So you just keep meeting random people day after day after day after day. If you meet billions of people, how are you supposed to even know what you value? Because you have too much information. It's like going on to Netflix. And I'm sorry, I love Netflix. But hmm. seriously, I, I, I am overwhelmed. The only way I, and by the way, if you're dealing with a non-neurotypical <laughs> individual, um, or you are one, go to Netflix, go over to the search bar type in one movie that you like like i love happy gilmore for comedy i'll type in happy gilmore it'll pull up things on the right or whatever that'll be somewhat related it's the only way i can search for anything 
if I go to comedies, there's like 6 billion options. I, it's too much. Now that leads me back in again to the relationships. You have Bumble, you have Grinder, you have, again, uh, I'm not, there's Match, there's Zeus, there's, um, my goodness, there's like thousands of them, Tinder. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get into like all the other ones. There's too many. And the thing is, is that we've forgotten that what it matters most in a relationship is knowing ourselves being happy with life on our own. If we're content with our life, the person that we find that enhances that, that's what matters. If you try to build your life on someone else and you think that that uh, somebody else can complete you, you are absolutely doomed. And I speak from personal experience multiple (laughs) times. So as far as that goes, I'm just... You know, you learn from experience. Luckily, I learned very hard. So I'm hoping I'm hoping people that listen to this can be open-minded and take it some advice. Love yourself. Figure out what your value is. Understand you are special as you are. And anyone who doesn't see that isn't worth your time in terms of a relationship. It does not mean cut them out of your life. It doesn't mean don't work with them. What I'm saying is when you look at a serious relationship, value yourself. You matter. And that comes to friendships. That comes to, you know, your family. Family are the people who are there for you, who are reaching out when you're not well, whatever else you are dealing with. And that matters. That's like key. So if you know who you are, then of course the relationships will come to you. But how many people even know what matters? I used to think, you know, a specific body type matters. No, that has nothing to do with it. Being comfortable with the person, being safe in a relationship, being able to share, being able to grow together, being able to, all of these things that we think are important, especially when we're young are so stereotypical and based off of social media. Oh my goodness. You look at Instagram and you think like you have to have, I don't know, lip perfect fillers. Teeth, perfect so, teeth, express, yes. gorgeous legs. Perfect everything. Smile. As a male, oh my goodness. My my niece was like watching a like a, a fighting game that you know they were playing. She's like, oh they they're sexualizing the females, I was like, dude, there's no males that look like that. They're all like ripped. There's not a single shred of fat on the body. I'm like, wait a second. This happens to all sides. Our expectations are we should be on vacation all the time. We should all be flying helicopters. We should all have butlers. We should all have, you know, Rolls Royces um, and private jets. Oh, if you don't have those things, you're not worthy of having a relationship that is not true and no one has all of those things most of those people i think somebody on twitter that i like uh to follow oh they're like everybody you know all the people that ba- that went bankrupt i know uh own their own boat and i was like huh you know it's like at a certain point we have lost what matters in relationships. What matters in relationships is someone that's going to be there. Somebody that believes in you. Somebody that supports you. um, The evidence is quite, quite obvious. Over half of of marriages end in divorce. It's up around 57 to 60% end in divorce. I mean, I remember when it was one in five and one in four and thirty yeah. percent. It's more than half, maybe three fifths. Everybody knows people. Everybody's parents are divorced. Divorced. It is so unusual to have um, a, a home with a family, two parents, maybe two kids, and it, and um, they're all living together under the same roof. So it's not just non neurotypical people who screw up relationships it's pretty much everybody 
<laughs> yeah, but so, but the, it's just more intense. It's more obvious in the um, population that is non neurotypical. A quick end to my my contribution would be: we need to do something. Um, and I and I mean, it's so hard to to do something solitarily if you're the only one playing by the rules and everyone else is cheating. Um, it's not going to work out. Most people lie on these uh, sites, their age, their dimensions. They take, um, <laughs> they put makeup on, they have you know, phot photographers take pictures of them in strikingly sexy tone. You know, and, and everybody's afraid to be found out. They're afraid that if they're not perfect, they're not going to get anybody and they'll spend their dying days alone being spoon-fed gruel in an old age home. Um, so it's a huge problem, and it's, it, the expectations are obviously unrealistic, and uh, it's not headed for a very good place. Well, you know, it's, it's so interesting because I think, you know, you know, you and I have talked about this before, and, you know, there's, there's a, a, a part of, me that of course is you know always like beyond hopelessly romantic in not just my belief in romance but in all humans and you know i i do think you know some of this and, and you know i know there's a lot of doom and gloom when we, when we talk and we'll have to do a show on ai but with some of the ai that's coming out there's there's hope that, you know, maybe people can start discovering what really matters in relationships. And, you know, um, you know, there's, there's definitely one of those, the, the most empowering things is to realize that you can, you can reach your absolute potential all on your own. You, it's something that, no one I, I know i don't even think i really understood it on my own i didn't realize i could do it i always assumed i needed somebody else or you know i needed you have to have this partner you know there's this picture perfect you know frame that everyone sees and it's not real the Oops. thing is the only the only thing that i absolutely know 100 percent that's real is that you can you can see what you want to become and you can become it all on your own you need the willpower you need the the grit you need the willingness to sacrifice in the short term for a long-term vision and then you need to do the work but if you do all of those things it's it can all be done all on your own and when you do that, you feel successful and you feel happy. So if you want relationships, work on yourself, become happy as you are, the relationships will show up. It's, it's not magic. It's just a matter of, you know, when we're happy, we are magnetic. And we only become happy when we are successful and we feel like we are empowered and there's no reason that every person can't do that. And especially this message goes out to all of the people who have some label or some diagnosis. It's absolutely that label has no bearing on what you can do as a relationship. If you have some diagnosis, you can be a great parent. You can be a great husband, wife, you know, partner doesn't matter. You can sibling, right? Anyone can be successful and be phenomenal no matter what they're facing. If they're willing to do the work and manage themselves and be successful on their own. So that would be my uh, ending statement. And I know this one went on a little longer, but I thought it was a really important topic and we covered it kind of before, but we're on a little bit more of a groove. So Jeffrey, do you have, uh, I want to make sure I, I give you no, the space good. to end. Nope. Thank you. Yeah, it's always amazing. Um, and thank you so much for all the things you've done for me. If anybody needs to reach out, 
uh, to Jeffrey Freed. Um, they can certainly uh, find his information on our show notes and like Spotify for sure. And I think all the places that uh, you listen, you might listen to the podcast. You can certainly reach out to us uh, directly. Um, and, you know, please be happy with your life. Be happy with who you are. Understand what you can do and um, never stop trying. Um, that's the message Jeffrey kept giving me. It's one of the reasons I survived and he keeps giving it on these podcasts. Please listen and understand, you know, we're, we're here to, to promote uh, a very happy life for everybody. We're all capable of it. So thanks so much. We will see you all soon and, or I guess speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Gas to Geared Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with everyone you know. And definitely like, follow, and subscribe. Certainly leave a comment if you'd like. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about the next time. Also, in our show notes, there should be direct links where you can follow us on our social media, as well as reach out to us directly. Thanks again, and have a great day. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on Chaos to Cured podcast are the speaker's own. All discussion is based on our own experiences. We do not and cannot guarantee the accuracy or completeness of any information. Chaos to Cured podcast cannot give medical or health advice. All discussion is based upon our personal experiences and meant for general and educational purposes. This podcast is not a substitute for professional help or for diagnostic purposes for yourself or another. Chaos to Cured podcast always encourages you to consult an appropriate professional.